Almost Punk Podcast, episode 18 with Colin and Olga. Breaking news, Victory Records auction to sell off all of their stuff just ended. A year and a half ago, Victory Records was sold off and uh, it was sold for a reported up to $30 million. This is an underground punk label. And then I just found out they sold 15 million albums over the 30 year career. Well, yeah, it was a huge, they had a really big chunk of that sort of post hardcore metalcore, like the really heavy music, right? Like about 10 years ago. And they had a day to remember Hawthorne Heights. Yep. Those are all huge. And taking back Sunday. But I was a fan of victory records a long time ago for one album and that was electric Mm. frankenstein's how to make a monster which is one of my top favorite albums of all time top 10 for sure maybe even in the top five i'm not sure not only that i worked at a a music magazine and victory records paid their bill on time and i was the collection caller and so Mm. i'm a fan of any record label that pays their bills on time so collection callers don't have to call them so good Pro, good for you, Victory. But then on the other hand, there was the downside for Victory was I always thought of them as like the money, the money label, the business label, mm-hmm. because it they were they never gave off the vibe that they were wanting to stick to the underground or whatever. They were like running themselves like a professional organization or that was the intent of the label. Paying their bills on yeah. time. Uh, signing bands that did well. well that's, Freaking well, that's, crazy. Okay, okay, that's what I'm getting at. So they had Electric Frankenstein, who I doubt sold any records. That album had to have bombed. I, it's too good. So some other company comes around and buys them out for $30 million, and he sells it. So what if you're a band on that label, and you were like, you're proud of yourself. You're all in the punk underground. You didn't sell out to the man. You turned down offers from major labels and you, you're, you're doing it independent. You're a punk. And then what's the owner of that label do? Sells it off. You don't have any control of your own mi- music anymore. Your, your catalog is owned by a massive corporation. They can re-release your album in any way they want. Remix it, remaster it, throw it in the garbage. You have no connection to your own music at all anymore. It's nuts. So that's an issue. And then that was last year. Today, the company sold all the stuff out of their office. They had everything for sale. They had chairs for sale. The couches were for sale. The plat. Did you get anything? No, you know, it's impossible. You you have to go there to pick it up. It's Chicago. Oh. How am I going to drive across the country? Although the deals were insane. They had like screen printing machines for sale. They had bubble wrap for sale. They had boxes of unopened CDs of their own bands that they were selling. So uh, there's two parts of me right now. There's a there's the logical part that's really happy that I'm not by Chicago. And, and, and because I would probably buy stupid shit. And then there's the hoarder, irrational music fangirl side of me that's just like, I want the garbage can. Yep. And I want the sign. And I probably would have bought something stupid. We all know I would have. You would have gotten so. like the, a day to remember as gold record. They were selling it. You can just buy it <laughs> off the wall for like 50 bucks. I mean, they don't care. That's, I mean, that's hella funny. You're a band. You're like. I mean, I don't even. Gold that's record. not even a band I like, but I, I, I do want to be able to say, yeah, I have a gold. Yeah, record. who doesn't want a gold record? At my house that I bought on clearance at an auction when a record label closed shop. See, that's that's more details. But do you have a gold record? Yes, I do. That'd be hella funny. You're a band and you want a gold album of your own, and you have one, but. There's four members in your band and they only printed out one of them. So now the other guys don't have one. So you have to go to the Victory Records auction and buy off all their gold records just so you can have one of your own. I think they give you one for every person in the oh, band. Oh, do they? I'm not familiar how the process works. I'm pretty works. sure. <laughs> I don't know. All 
the gold records I've gotten, at Is least. Right? You know, well, then <laughs> scratch that last comment. Fine. They don't need to go buy their own gold record. What if they wanted to give I one mean, to their okay. mom, though? What about that? Yeah, I was just going to say, you know who would want one? Your mom. Oh, you would have to. You would totally have to buy one for your mom uh, because you wouldn't. I, mean, I would you wouldn't even mine. get to keep yours. I wouldn't keep mine. Yeah, that's what I was going to I don't want mine. Yeah, you would have to give it to your mom. I don't want see? anything. Oh, I guess it's not worth that much if they're selling it for 50 bucks on auction. I would just say in general, I don't like to own things that are worth too much money because I assume I'm going to get robbed. So, uh, you know, and then you have to keep it in storage. So I'm not into like the expensive collectibles. I see. <laughs> but when I saw that the couch, I'll, I'll keep that. Yeah. They had a couch for sale. I thought, wow, that's a really great deal. And Electric Frankenstein probably sat on that couch. And I could have Electric Frankenstein's DNA in my house. No one would want to steal that, but I would enjoy it. No. So yeah. it the auction just ended. Yeah, that's what I mean. I would totally buy something stupid. Like, I think they had a TV. I looked very briefly. And it's like, I, need, I want a new TV. I would totally buy the Victory Records TV. And then it would be great because it, then I could have emotional attachment to a TV. Yep. And then when the TV is like 17 years old and then it doesn't even work anymore, I'd be like, but it was from Victory Records. Thursday probably used this TV. They had TVs. <laughs> they had a TV on sale for $5, not working. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I just thought that was That's great. Amazing. Like, I do have advice for, for the bands that are. Yes. I'm glad you do. I was going to ask you about I, I, that. I always have a solution. Okay, this reminds me of a story of a little company called Vine that did little animated, little short, short videos. And Twitter bought them, and then they basically didn't get it to work how they wanted to or whatever. Anyways, they shut down Vine. Yeah. And then a couple of years passed by, and we have TikTok. And we already had TikTok. It was called Vine, and it was years ago. So they just need to figure out their TikTok pivot. Well, just, well, just well, hold on, though. change the band name, or I don't know. That's exactly what Victory Records themselves did. He sold his back catalog for 30 million. I know, that's how the million. story reminded me. He, he yep. sold it for 30 million. What did he do the next day? Starts a new record label. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, I, I mean, you just have to figure out the new pivot. Oh, that victory. But the, what, the band, what can the band do? Victory did. Victory just changed their record label name. They can do whatever they want. They got all this money. But if you're Hawthorne Heights, you can't just change your name. That's not going to get you your rights to your back catalog. Well, but are they still on the, are they still? They're not. Do they, are they out of a contract? Is everyone out of a contract now, then, well, or what's the what's the legal situation? Well, you know, as a, a lawyer, <laughs> <laughs> we're not I would lawyers, assume but... <laughs> that there was some sort of language in the the contract that would allow bands to exit their current deals mm -hmm. or whatever. But your back catalog is gone. You just you have no yeah. say. You can't call up Tony anymore and say, Tony, it's our 20 year anniversary. How about we put out a thousand vinyl or whatever? That's not happening anymore. Yeah. You can't just it's sold to Concord International or some some conglomerate. They don't care about you. They just want to make money off your back catalog, and they own bazillion no. bands. Yeah. Oh, now this just reminds me of the plot to Empire Records movie. What? <laughs> I've seen that movie. What are you talking about? The movie is about an independent uh, music store being purchased by a conglomerate uh, yes. and everybody being like all worried, like what's going to happen to our jobs? We're not the corporate type. Anyways, it's just the same, you are, the same thing re repeating. That itself. is correct. Get new deals. Crazy. I think if you are banned and you get stuck on one of those deals with Concord, then you're, you're just, you got to record an album and throw it in the track. Like they're not, just make it your worst album of all time and don't spend any time on it and just get it out as soon as possible. Just so you record can- Record it in your bathroom. Yeah, I mean, you just need to get two albums out. Ta I can't imagine any band having longer than a two album deal on an independent yeah. label. So anyway. Yeah. And that's also happened. I know, I definitely know, have heard of stories of bands in the past just being in, stuck in a deal and so then they just release whatever because they're they don't care so yeah nearly any live album any live album by any band 
Yep. You know, they're just doing contractual. Ones. Yep. Jeez. It's contractual agreements. And people. that's why they always stink. But yeah. Anyway. Yep. Next topic. Yeah. Johnny Rotten trending on the internet, a 61 year old man. He has mastered the art of promotion. This guy. Yeah. Sex Pistols lead singer. One album yeah. in the 70s. And here we are talking about them today. One album. <laughs> it just happens to be an awesome album. Sex Pistols, never mind the bollocks. Again, that's yeah. one of my favorite albums also. That is the second punk album I got into ever. So that was, oh, wow. that's why I like them. And because of, because of the Sex Pistols album, I got into Public Image Limited, although not in that, not in, a, not in an in-depth way. But anyway, uh, Public Image Limited has a new documentary, Public Image is Rotten. That's the name of it. It's the story of Public Image Limited. The Public Image Limited album I have is Second Edition. I believe that's the name of the title, which I like. It's got the song called Memories which is super good. It's also got a song called Albatross that I really like. And because of those two songs, I really, it's totally bass driven. Uh, you could call it post-punk if you want. It's totally experimental, weird. It has nothing to do with the Sex Pistols at all. It's like dance music for people in outer space or something like, it is just bass lines. Yeah, the most I've heard of him lately was that just that a lot of kind of punk accounts and things criticizing him for being like a huge trump supporter yeah. so i i was thinking he was saying all this stuff to get in the news because he's promoting this new documentary and he also uh, has his new memoir out which that's another topic because he already wrote a memoir i read it already like two decades ago i read that thing hey it was a nice uh, memoir i liked it i'd recommend punks read it i'd recommend it you know it's a good it's not Mm -hmm. scandalous or anything but it's a good story of his life with the sex mm -hmm. so what are you doing how many how many memoirs are you allowed to write just one yeah one you get one so i don't understand so he's promoting the new memoir and the other thing like you said he was promoting trump so i'm like this guy oh my god and, his memoir. and and then uh the reason why he's also trending though is because he got bitten on the penis by a squirrel because or, or rats because he owns them and he's playing with them and they bite his wiener what <laughs> naked are you you must be playing with your rats naked for them to have access i guess they can bite you through the pants i don't huh. know <laughs> the guy is leading i mean you know what i take it back what i just said that you only get one memoir if if this is what's happened to him in the last 20 years that's not captured in his memoir like he needs to write a follow-up okay. memoir about being bitten by yeah. his rat on his penis like Point given. That's, that's, <laughs> right like, that's memoir this is the kind of stuff people want to read yeah you're right i was wrong i so I, was... I i guess that's the thing is you gotta i mean i i also thought anyone should just have one memoir but apparently if you if you do it too early you just kind of maybe more exciting stuff happens to you later. But that's the thing. If you wait too long, you're dead. Yeah. So it's just like, how do you time your memoir? I don't know. It's, you think you're... Me. The name of you the know. memoir is, I could be wrong. I could be right. Uh, you know, I when I was working at the magazine, my boss interviewed him on speakerphone for uh, for the magazine I was working for. Working for and uh, he is highly entertaining as an interviewee. Unlike some bands, you can you're like trying to trying as hard as you can to pull out anything. There's a lot yeah. of bands, they don't even want to be interviewed in the first place. And some of them, they are drugged out or they just are not good communicators over the phone or whatever. This guy is a master, like I was saying, master self-promoter and on the phone, oh my God, he was so sarcastic. He was like grilling my boss's jokes. I mean, they were, he was just like so dry. Yeah. Such a dry delivery. It was like insulting my boss, but it was so funny. I don't I loved it. Uh and ready for more? Yes. Liquid Death? Did you watch they the commercial? Water. I watch Okay, so say what it is. Okay. So Liquid Death releases a second punk album about why people hate their product and you 
show this to me. And there's a little commercial about like all these jingles about people hating their album. And so I, it, it, it seems like a hard, the hard times article. That, yes. That's what this is. We should also like. mention this is hard seltzer. So it's an alcoholic water. Oh, I thought it was plain water. What? See? Is that, yeah. how is that possible? Is that right? Are you telling, I need to look this up right now while you continue the story. I thought it was seltzer. I'm looking this up. Okay. I thought it was water. What? Oh, now, okay. Are you looking it up or am I looking it up? I am looking okay. it up. Liquid death mountain water. That's it? I, that's uh, all it is? Murder. Yeah, it's a mountain water, drinking water from Australian Alps, and sparkling water from the Australian Alps. Oh my God. This whole time I thought it was hard seltzer. Remember we were watching Weekend at Fatty's and everybody yes, had do. liquid water all over the place. I just assumed That's how they I were learned drunk. about it because I learned, but the reason I knew it was water because Fat Mike did like a live stream early in quarantine and he was drinking one and people were like, I thought you were sober, what are you doing? And he's just like, I'm drinking, or he was driving, I think while drinking it. And people were like, what are you doing? He's like, this is water. Oh my And so God. I was like, that's how I learned about it. But then they constantly, he always has liquid death and that's how I knew about oh it. Oh my, okay, well, you are right. I, I watched that commercial it's hysterical. It was really funny. That good marketing on liquid death. I was making fun of it. We get a fair. I was like, oh, this episode's sponsored by liquid death because I kept referencing it so many times. Now here I am again. Uh, they have weaseled yeah. their way into the punk scene. They got Rise Against, right? Well, not writing, but playing a song with lyrics provided by people on the internet that are just sending How hate do messages. You do that. And they got Lawrence Arms, Alkaline Trio, Bomb yeah. Pops, Anti Flag, 14 songs. And this is volume two. We have to, we have to try this water. Oh, I know. Uh, we do. We, we do have to try this yeah. water. And now I'm mad because I, I, I thought it was hard seltzer. Cool. So I was like, oh, cool. It'll be a fun day. Now I'm like, well, now I have no. to have that and then buy something no, else. We're just going to have to buy some, some of these cans and hydrate. You know what we could do though? We could make, use that water as like, don't, did you say they have bubble water? We could make mixers yeah, or something like that. We could have what? vodka soda or something. Well, I mean, we could, we could be sober people also. I mean, we could be responsible. Can we though? No, I mean, kidding. for a certain length of time. So that's fine. Yeah, yeah. We can finish a can, I, I guess. <laughs> And then other news, you know, we've talked about um, the band War on Women a couple of times on this on our podcast. And I guess there's a new kind of documentary. Uh, Her War is Our War that's now on YouTube, but I have not seen it yet. So I don't know. But I had it's... just heard that you just told it to me like five yeah, seconds. I just before. got a text message about this as we were about to hit record. I was so trying to it process it at the same time, but I am definitely mm-hmm. going to be watching that. I need yeah, to see it. Yeah, we got to watch that. Oh, I need we'll, to we'll, see it. We'll, We'll drink that water, we'll watch the documentary, we'll report back. And then it's funny because the liquid, you know, we we're just talking about Johnny Rotten yeah. trending. And then the liquid death is like the same in line of the same genre of like trolley promotion. And is that the new, is that the new thing now? Apparently. They got me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you almost bought water on accident. <laughs> Man, can you imagine? Can you imagine how disappointing that would be when you're like getting ready to drink a seltzer, and then it's just you open it, and if you get not in the sparkling one, the plain one, (laughs) you're just like, what the heck is this? I could totally see that happening. Oh my god! Good thing you You told me. And then you would be like, yeah, you would be like grudge, and you'd come back, and you'd just be fact checker extraordinaire uh, jumping in to save the day before imminent oof. doom. Whoa! I know, <laughs> I know. That I, would have uh, sucked. There's, there's nothing worse than when you expect one thing and then you get something completely different, yeah. and then it's just like war on well, women. Though, uh, oh, hold on, but war on women. Though we're gonna do a best of like best songs yeah. of the year. That'll be our next episode. War on Women will be on that list. I've been listening to them. Whoa. I, this one, 
the first one I listened to was Capture the Flag, and that was an immediate grasp of me. It grasped me immediately. This next one, a slower burn. It took, it takes a little longer. It's a kind of a different style. It's actually more, it's got a lot of hard rock elements replacing or in addition to the hardcore of Capture the Flag. So it's slightly different, but it it's heavy. So I like it. I like it in a different way, but yeah. great album. We'll be talking more about it next week. Yeah, and then the other news I wanted to mention is Bad Religion is doing like a 40 year celebration of their career and they're doing live stream series. So they have like four different live streams. They're doing um, different decades. They're doing 80s, 90s, 2000s, and 210s. And I guess, I think you can buy either all four episodes for 40 bucks or just buy the one you want for 15. So that seems cool. Um, you I'm know, glad they're does doing that include something. a download when you say you could buy all four or just oh. buy one? Or does that mean you just attend one or attend the I four? Think that has still I been would my imagine. that's been my problem a lot with the live streams. I, know. I think you should be able to watch the live since you paid for it and it's digital anyway, and we're in a quarantine and life is terrible. You should be able to download at bare minimum the audio from it, if not the entire thing. None of this mm -hmm. lock out a day later baloney that they keep doing. So I, mm -hmm. Anyway, that's my recommendation to Bad Religion, who care what I think so much. <laughs> who are listening right now. Hey, guys. <laughs> Just saying. Why don't you offer it as a download for the people that have already paid 40 god dang dollars yeah. for a live another, stream? Come on. Another, another pro tip is you should shop the Victory record sale for some <laughs> cheap... Uh, Cheap uh, supplies That's for the, record labels. Like, uh, I'll just, I'll just put Berlitz it out there, guys. Eph Epitaph, he's like looking for uh, new office furniture or whatever. Just take it from Victory. They, got, they sold it for $30 million. Could you imagine, <laughs> like, if you're Asian Man Records, if Warner Brothers wants to buy your back catalog because you got a couple of Alkaline Trio records and they were like, here's $5 yeah. million. Do you take the $5 million if you're Asian Man for – it's one dude, one dude in a garage, and they're going to pay him $5 million, but he's a punk. He's got to say no. It's like, what? Oh, my God. But he would I, he'd say no. Oh, that's he's so probably hard. doing fine. He lives in Montessorino. $5 million. But then you sell out all your bands that have been loyal to you yeah. this whole time. Like Alkaline Trio, they'll hate you because, I mean, the whole time they've been like, we'll stick with you, man, because we love only, you. Okay. And then you, There's only one thing to do. You either, if you're, if you're going to sell, you got to change your name, move, like you are done. Like, you're like, you're like <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, 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 you're one of those country music guys now who's just like, oh, I only listen to country. Like you gotta, you gotta change it. Like you can't be in the same scene. You gotta, you're quitting everything. Uh, <laughs> everything, you, you, if you're doing it, everything must go just like their supply sale. It's like, no, we're selling everything. I'm changing my hair color. I'm getting a new face, changing my name. Like, I listen to hip hop now. I, I dance. Like, it would just be, that's the yeah, only way to do Mike it. Because if you're going to stick, <laughs> he's gonna, yeah. He's going to get in the country and move to Nashville. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the only, like, if, you, know, you got to, yeah, you got to really commit. Because what are you going to do? Like, hang out with your friends who are punks and like, are like, what the hell are you doing, dude? Like, no, no, no. You got to, if you're committing, you got to commit. What are you going to do? Someone gives you uh, ten million for your back catalog of other artists. I mean, I can see why somebody would want to sell. <laughs> but I understand the logic here. You it's like you can continue struggling in a shrinking market yep. of music yep. industry, trying to make money in a market that is no longer set up to even be profitable, yep. or you can just chill. Yep, that's <laughs> like, why I can't. I can't even blame Victory. For selling for thir for thirty million. Dollars. Thirty million is insane for for this. It's like that's. But crazy, you're right. So uh, every one of those bands will hate you for the rest of your life. Like all of those yeah. friends you ever made, they'll hate yeah. you. You sold them out. It's like being in in like a cartel or a mafia, and then you sell out all Ooh. your friends to the cops. That's why you got to yep. do the same thing. It's the less extreme, they they won't kill you, but you know you're you're not welcome to. 
go to their shows anymore. So you got it. That's why you got to commit. You might be able to salvage the friendships by before doing anything, getting their buy in some way. Like, I do have an idea. What's that? I, you just reminded me. I read it was in the meme, so it must be true, oh, true that George Clooney gave each one like 10 of his friends a million dollars. That's what you got to do. Oh, that's... that is how you, yep. but you don't, maybe you don't do a million, but you are like, here's like a hundred grand or whatever, 50 grand, like whatever. You kind of split it up. You kind of yeah. give people like a giant check. Yeah. So then they can't be like mad. That's the only way to do it. If you're going to, if you don't want to move to Nashville. Oh, man. We've solved the problem. I'm glad, I'm glad you we came We solved up. every problem. I mean, this was a big problem yeah. that we were going to have. So the fact that yeah. you just solved it, you've solved it for everyone. Now we know. Yeah. You just write a check. What are people going to do? I mean, they'll be mad. They'll be like, oh, he yeah. got rid. But then it's like, oh, and then I lived on a year on this money during the pandemic, That's true. you know, until I made it to the other side. It's all good. He had all that money and now's the perfect time. So Hawthorne Heights, they're all mad. You sold us out. But here is $75,000. That's Boom. It's the nationwide average of what people make in a year. I'm giving it to you all up front and we're still friends. Mm -hmm. You win, yep. I win. We're good, yeah. and they would probably be like, "I just don't know." They'd be like, "I just don't know if he cares enough about it to to, to distribute the the money." Like, but at well, least if if they were friends, their friends would be like, "I don't like this, but mm -hmm. I'm not cutting you out of my life or some may maybe for some people. Mm -hmm. I think some people, no matter what, they're gonna hate him. But he's he's probably gonna write those people yeah. off." But you keep the ones that will stick around in some way. So yeah. it's a good compromise. When are one of my friends selling out enough to then have to buy my That's true. I've never done anything again, you know? significant. So if someone came up to me and be yeah. like, hey, you want 75 grand, even though I, I made millions off of whatever. I mean, it yeah. would depend on percentage wise. What it was. I would, I would start a negotiation, but I would be open to hearing something. We could strike a deal. A deal we for can friendship. go to coffee and talk about being friends, okay? Like, you know, I'm willing to remain friends, but I'm going to need a higher percentage of that payment that you've received. <laughs> right, right. They're like, I, I designed a product that killed a bunch of people. And you're like, okay, I, I'm going to need a little more money than that. 12.5%. <laughs> you know, that seems like a reasonable amount. This this 2% that's on the table is just not going to not gonna cut it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, people don't, you know, the opening uh, bid is just a negotiation point, people. When you're, when people are trying to give you money to be their friends, don't take the first That's offer. true, good point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's just the opening. No, Super no, you, you can ask for more. You can ask for stuff you gotta in the negotiate. future. That's true, don't, you, yeah. everything's on the table when you're negotiating, so yeah. don't, don't sell yourself short. That's just the opening, yeah, that's what I learned. I didn't know this, you know, you can negotiate salaries and stuff, I did not know that, but... If somebody's bribing you, you could probably negotiate bribes too. Good. I point. would imagine. Well, yeah. Anything to add before we go on to new music? No, let's talk about new music. We'll talk about Hate Breed and the song yeah. Instinctive. I don't know what it is, but when I listen to Hate Breed, I mm -hmm. and I like it, I think uh -huh. I am a meathead. I just I cannot believe yeah. I cannot believe I'm listening to this music and I cannot believe I'm enjoying it. But I was like Hell yeah. This song instinctive okay. is awesome. I and then I hate yeah. myself for it. I'm like, is there something wrong with me? Am I a dick? Am I complete I mean, yeah, I probably am or whatever. But is it because <laughs> of hate breed? I don't know. Okay. Story for you. So I was listening to all the music we're talking about this week at the dog park earlier. And I'm listening to Hate Breed, and I'm just like walking through the dog park secretly on my headphones, feeling like a badass. It's all like blasting aggressive. My dog almost got into two fights while I'm listening to Hate Breed. I have a tiny dog, people. But then the next song played, and then she just started sniffing the dogs. And I was like, could she tell? You know how they say dogs pick up on like, human's mood and like she wanted to jump in the pit. And all of that. She's like, yeah, that's and I'm like, in circle pits. I was like, I swear she could tell that I was just being like aggressive. And she just like two dogs like come up to her and she was just like, bah! and she starts like attacking at like bigger dogs. And she usually doesn't do That's that. what hate like, breed does. Weird. But it felt, but it felt so like fitting to my mood as I'm listening to this song and I'm walking through the dog park being a badass. And then 
it ended and then she was like, oh yeah, I'm shy now. That, that, I, I'm scared I mean, of other dogs. Read in a nutshell, is it not? Yeah, <laughs> it was amazing. I was like, I think this, this band has just affected my dog oh, somehow. God. Like that was crazy. That, man. And the thing about it is like all their songs sound the same pretty much to me. I just can't believe I like it. It's just a, a shock to my brain, but I do. I, I know. Surprise, and the other thing, you. the other thing about them that's annoying is they're like positive mental attitude, hardcore, oh. like metalcore with lyrics that are like, "Go out and succeed, go be a success, roar, roar." And I'm like, that is the dumbest thing Don't I've ever the heard. First offer. <laughs> Don't take Don't take. Negotiate your friendships, roar. And I'm just like, I cannot believe the boundaries. it. Boundaries. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, still awesome. Self-care. I mean, it's going to make it on my that list. That would be a fun, that would be a fun album, which it's kind of like the Liquid Death commercial. If somebody did like a metal core of like all the trendy, positive self-care things people say online, like I would so listen to that if they were both like, Sundays is for self-care and like, dude, set your boundaries. Don't let anyone overstep them. Just find, you know, 10 hate breed songs on Spotify. Make it a, make it a playlist. And you've done that. Cause I'm telling you, that's what these songs are about. They're about positive mental attitude and it drives me nuts, but it's good. <laughs> Colin, you're like negative mental I'm attitude. Not even, no. I am, I've had this conversation at work too, because people have said the same. I do not have a negative mental attitude. I have a neutral mental attitude and I react based on the situation. If there is good things afoot and I feel that good things are afoot, I'm going to be positive mm -hmm. about it. If I can tell something's going down the shithole, then I know it's bad and everything's going to end poorly. It's like, you know, you're, you're using your logical it's brain. It's called realistic. That's okay. It's, you have a realistic. Why shouldn't we all be like that? Why do we have to have a I positive mental attitude about bad things? It's illogical. It's dumb. It's a bad way to think. So I. It's called toxic positivity. Damn straight it is. Yep. Good point. Yep. Okay, well, maybe I'll have to move on to the next. Do you want to talk about Goldfinger right now? Oh, yeah. They have a whole new album. And it was actually really fun. Uh, Goldfinger, always fun. But, yeah. but hold on, though. Hold on. I was not a giant fan of the album, truth be told. Mm -hmm. However, I will always okay. like Goldfinger as a band because of them coming to San Jose, playing a free show at St. James Park, and inciting a riot, and then yelling out, fuck the police, as people were being mangled by the cops and which started an even bigger riot and it was so awesome to be there remember how you weren't there <laughs> yeah i was there it was amazing i had to go to like my brother's graduation and i'm still bitter really relationship with him by it the way. was an awesome show no okay and i like two of their albums open your eyes was pretty good but the uh mm -hmm. the self-titled one with mabel that's actually a really great mm -hmm. album. And I got into that one so late because it was in the bargain bin for like $2.99 back when CDs were like uh. $18. And I was like, oh, Goldfinger, mm -hmm. okay, pop punk, $2.99, okay. And then it turns out that album yeah. is a great album. So tell me yeah, about and this, this album. Is called, this album is called Never Look Back. I just thought it was kind of like what you need in 2020. It's fun, it's light hearted, it's catchy. It's not too positive for me. There was there was some stuff about that was like Nate. There were some like more positive songs, and then there were some more negative songs. So it was a little more neutral. Um, so I like that. It was just kind of like a fun, fun album to listen to. And that uh, the lead singer of Goldfinger, he is like a record producer extraordinaire these days. He did oh, uh, uh -huh. Burt McCracken. You know that band? Oh, the used. The used. The used. Thank the used. you. So he did like Chiados and the used and all yeah. those bands, and he became a bazillionaire on that. So I mean, that's the th his albums have such a sheen these days, and that's the thing about this latest Goldfinger one. It's, I'm not that they, they all they all have a sheen to them, but this one was just a little too much. There's like there's like this little little line i think that one's over the line it's like a fueled by ramen album it's just too much uh, too, too much for you like 
I probably would like bands on Fueled by Ramen, but they all have so much sheen that they just become pop bands and they take out all the rawness from them. And I mean, they sell more albums and they're more popular. And, but for me, it, I like mm -hmm. it, you know, a little bit the other way. But, you know, we got two people, two different opinions. Yeah. Check it out. Anything more yeah, on Goldfinger? It's, it's definitely <laughs> worth checking out. Okay. Yeah. And you know what else is worth checking out? This, this band is crazy. Baboon Show. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I missed the boat on this band. Apparently, they started in 2003. Their first album oh, wow. comes out in 2005. How did I miss them? I never heard of them. Don't know a thing about them until last week. The song that it, it's like a Spotify recommendation. You know, they, they pick my brain for me and they tell me what I like. And they put this one, mm -hmm. you would like this. And it was called Baboon Show. The song was called I Never Say Goodnight. This is like a power ballad. And it was ridiculous. I was laughing when I was listening to this. Like, this is what Spotify thinks I like. They think I like a, an 80s style power ballad. This is ridiculous. This is like a Guns N' Roses-y a little bit or something like that. It was and so then funny. you're like, but I don't like, like it. And I'm like, well, the singer's good. Uh, I'm going to look at some other songs. And then I went through their back catalog of 15 years. Amazing. They have so many awesome songs. I don't, this is why I'm like, how did I miss this band? It sounds like L7 is the lead singer of Turbo Negro. It is unbelievable. Oh. <laughs> like, how does this happen? Why am I listening to this weird power ballad? And then they have all this crazy punk rock that I could never even believe. It's like, I said to myself, Turbo Negro, L7, meet Scorpions, meet Motley Crue. Uh, it's insane, this band. They have so many great so what songs. What you're saying is the algorithm understand, knows you better than you know yes, yourself. That's See, what you, just, you have to trust the algorithm. That's, yeah. I only clicked on more songs because it insisted that I would like this band. And after I heard the first song where I was laughing my ass off, it was like, this is the funniest thing. So good. They're like my new favorite band right now. I'm just, I'm just in my, wow. in my, uh, well, in my room. That's all I ever go. But I'm like, I'm rocking the baboon show, man. This stuff is so good. <laughs> the lead singer looks like Ronnie James Dio, but sounds like Danita Sparks. Uh, guitar players wow. ripping it. They're playing punk rock like Turbo Negro. Like I said, I just can't believe how good this band is. And they're what a good quarantine discovery. Was, you know, if you weren't home, home. <laughs> I was depressed. Yeah. I was sitting there at lunch no. doing nothing like I do every lunch. I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'm going to prepare for the second <laughs> half of the day. And, uh, well, I guess I'll just see what's, uh, what's going on in the land of music. Baboon show. Yeah. That's a, that's a silly name. Like donkey show. Oh, I wonder if it's, this huh. is going to be like a parody band or something. Ha ah, ha It's a power ballad. Funny that. I wonder what else they have. Oh my God, this is amazing. Like it just, like from expectations to what it became was such a great, uh, what's that What's that word when you have two things? The, the Delta. The Delta oh, was Delta. just so far that it made yeah. the rest of my day good. And I was so happy. And it was all because of the Baboon Show. They have a live stream wow. on December 12th. Uh, I might have to check out oh. some of that. I don't know. But they're like my new favorite band now. They're crazy. Crazy band. Well, I think you have to now. Crazy band. And they're also, yeah. they remind me a little bit of the Toilet Boys, who I also like, hmm. although not vocally, but musically like the Toilet Boys. But yeah. Also, I love the Toilet Boys, I should mention. If Toilet Boys is available on Spotify, if you can't find it elsewhere, check out some Toilet Boys while you're at it. I'm just throwing their name out there because they're so good. Yeah. Another good band. This band is nuts. Flat out crazy. Abertooth Lincoln. <laughs> this, this song is called Soup for My Family. This band is progressive hardcore, prog hardcore. It is so weird. I, I mean, I have a tough time describing it. It's like post-hardcore, prog hardcore, prog metal, prog, I don't know. It's just nuts. I, do you have any sort of explanation that you could add on to this weirdness? No. It's angular. It's heavy yeah. as hell. The singer's just, rah, it's like rah, rah, rah stuff, but in a good way. 
I need to look into this band, Abertooth Lincoln. They got a crazy name and a crazy sound, and it's good. And then the other band I uh, like this week, Sponge. Not Sponge, Rotting Pinata, mid-90s Sponge, but Sponge. Uh -huh. Sponge with a U. Yeah, S-P-U-N-G-E. Apparently, they've been around for 15 years or more also. They've been around forever. Never heard of them. And why is that? Because they're ska punk. And I, like I was saying last week, I don't sit around at my house listening to ska punk because I don't sit around my house skanking. And if you're listening to ska and you're not skanking, what's the point? That was my argument last week. Yeah. And then this week, what do I find? A ska skanking. punk song that's good you're to listen to. You're skanking your, in your room? I couldn't believe it. I thought, wow. So Sponge, the song is Just Sayings. I, I did go through their back catalog. Okay, you know, what mm -hmm. I said last week okay. kind of stands. It, 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 I'm not a big fan of everything that they've done or anything. This is not a revolutionary baboon show type of situation here. But that, that song in particular, Just but Sayings, what? so good. But what about, you know, are you at the point of quarantine where you're ready to skank at your house yet? I think I might be. It's, I'm getting desperate. Yeah. It, these are desperate times. I mean, there's a couple of ska punk <laughs> bands I do like, you know, like The Imposters. I do like that uh -huh. band. You know, there's Left Alone. I can, I can kind of do some Left Alone. Their latest song is a total rip off The Imposters yeah. for that man. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I could put together a playlist of good ska, ska punk. It's not my least favorite subgenre of punk. So, I mean, no. theoretically, I should... You know, Goldfinger, for crying out loud. They have a lot of ska punk songs. So, uh, Rancid. Yeah. Okay, now that I think about yeah. it, you know, Mighty Balls. Okay, there's plenty of good ska punk songs out there. It's just like I was saying, skanking in your house is weird. But at this point, I'm just Or it was until this year. Yeah, I'm like desperate. now I feel like there's no rules. Sometimes I, I ask like a friend like, oh, is this weird? I'm thinking of doing this. And no, at no point has anyone ever said any, any weird idea I've had. This year has been weird. I mean. I already, I already live my life like that anyways, but now it's like, oh, is it weird that I'm going to do this? And they're like, no, nah, anything goes. Yes, like anything goes, goes at this point. Scott Punk at we're wearing your house. Pajamas goes. Yeah, we, we're, wearing, we're wearing pajamas to work, basically. Sometimes we don't wear pants for weeks. Like, what, what is no social norms anymore? I'm sitting around in uh, pajamas right now. Uh, it's uh -huh. the middle of the day. Well, towards the evening. Uh, I might go out and skank in the front room if I feel like it to sponge. You know what? And would yeah. that be weird? No, that'd be perfectly fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes my, my favorite part, not my favorite, but the funniest part of quarantine living to me sometimes is when I change from like one pair of non non-regular pants, like pajama pants or like leggings or whatever sweats to like a different pair for a different activity but they're they're still like not jeans or any normal sort of pant that you would ever wear pre-quarantine yep. but now it's like eh, whatever second half of the day underwear and then i got my first half of the yeah, day underwear. It's, like, it's a whole new me yeah you're like well yeah or sometimes you just don't get around till brushing your till teeth till three or putting on pants or whatever it is what it is absolutely oh <laughs> uh, my next pick was western addiction the song they burned our paintings this song the intro is just so good it didn't even matter about the rest of the song it was just the way i like hardcore to be it was just heavy and like just coming at me but not it doesn't start off like a buzz sock and trying to just rip my face off from the start with screaming and yelling with the blast beat and the double kick and all like it, that's not how this is. this is like hard rock that in a way that hardcore it's like hard rock hardcore <laughs> I don't know if that, mm. it was just pummeling in a heavy way without being a blast beat and i just loved how it just did it just engaged me rather than just blew me away the rest of the song you know it's still a good hardcore song don't get me wrong i liked it it was like zeke it's like black flag and like strike anywhere else that's gonna make it on my list i just know it i mean i haven't made the list final but it's so good at least it gives you something to do apparently you're very excited about your 
end of the year list. Oh, I'm very excited about my end of the year list. Did you have anything to add there? No. Are we going to do a joint list or are we? Oh, no, we're, do, we're just going to make a joint list and then we'll talk about what we okay. like. Okay. 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 I got a couple more real quick. Band is called yes. Chaser. The song is called Look Alive. It sounds like Pennywise, Bad Religion, and No Effects. And when I say that it sounds like it, I mean, it sounds exactly like it. And maybe <laughs> normally I would say, you know what? This band is completely ripping off these bands. This is like a rip-off band. But they did it so good that I didn't mind. And I'm in quarantine, so maybe they get a pass. Yeah. You know, maybe, maybe I normally wouldn't like Chaser. But this year I do. So good for them. Yeah. I don't have more to say about them. Yeah. <laughs> Scumbag Millionaire, this was the band that I was saying sounds like Zeke, Turbo AC, and the Dragons. That's just like the uh, punk and roll genre of punk. A little bit, maybe even a little electric Frankenstein-y. Um, but it's more of like the rock and roll punk. And I can go, <clears throat> I can go hard into that stuff, but it's so easy for the bands to get it wrong where it's too much hard rock. And then it, yeah. I hate it. I, it's, then it's like a bar band just playing hard rock. I don't know what that line is, but it's like the turbo ACs are right on the line for me. And listening to Scumbag Millionaire, I felt they had some songs that I'm like, this is, this is good punk and roll, but they do have a lot of that. This is rock. This is just regular yeah. rock that's gruff, gruff rock. And I don't like the gruff rock. So, but mm -hmm. anyway, Desperado. The name of the song, that thing, there's no doubt about that one. That one is a face ripper. So if you like Zeke, but Zeke, I don't put Zeke into the punk rock and punk and roll category, by the way. Zeke is crazy. And this song, Desperado, is on the Zeke spectrum. But the band as a whole <laughs> is similar to Turbo ACs and the Dragons, who are definitely more into that other stuff. Last one I had on my list for the week, Journey Back. The song is called We Are Here. Pop punk out of German, out of Germany, German skate punk. I didn't think there was anything mind blowing about it. It was just like, hey, here's a good pop punk song that's mm -hmm. from a band of Germans, apparently, but they sing in English, so it's fine. I don't notice. Skate punky, pop punky, you know, it's in the middle where it's not over the line pop punk because there is a line where skate punk starts to become pop punk. And then it gets oh, yeah. real bad real quick for me. So this, yeah. this band is definitely on the good side of pop punk and skate punk before it takes that turn. And once you make that turn, there's no coming back. You're, you're bad. <laughs> there's no turning nope. back. <laughs> nope. Then you're on Fueled by Ramen yeah. and it's over. So. Yeah, well, <laughs> maybe maybe they'll, they'll sell that label for, you know, a billion dollars. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, those were all the, the songs that I liked this week. Yeah. I think what's happening is you're finding some music because of internet. You're finding some bands that are not from U.S., which is why you haven't heard of some of them before. Yes, that's true. I think there were yeah. three bands there. That's that a trend from the I'm States. noticing. Yeah. So that's probably why we haven't heard of a lot of them before. Well, I'm glad music yeah. exists in other countries besides the United States. Apparently, it's, it's mostly better per capita. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> European punk, better Maybe. per capita, <laughs> at least in oh, Sweden and Germany. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was, and yeah, I don't know. You got a grudge? Oh, I guess my grudge this week is kind of boring, but very true to life. I hate it when you have all your bills due at once, like annual bills or semi-annual bills, like everything's due at the same time. And it's, it's a pain and I hate it. And I wish things were spread out so you wouldn't have to pay like a couple of annual bills all at once. Yes. And then there's the monthly bill problem. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's, I'm not even talking about that, but that one you like anticipate, like, you know, but it's like the, you know, I just got my car insurance quote and I'm like, Oh, I have to pay that now. Oh, like, and they make why? you pay like the six months right up front yeah. kind of thing. And then you get a yeah. tax bill yeah. at the same time. And then you got your regular, yeah. regular car and, bill and your mortgage bill. Yeah. And, and you your have to get your whatever lease on this, your, yeah, or like bill. my, you know, my AAA membership expired. Like everything yep. is just for some reason, all of the things that I like have to renew annually or semi-annually are all due right now. And I'm like, 
but I'm also trying to shop and yep. it's, it's annoying. So now I was like, you know what? I hate that. Agreed. Um, Lame. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my grudge was just that I've lost all energy. I don't even know. Uh, I don't, I might've mentioned this on a previous episode. I don't remember, but I just know that it, about 8 15 p.m i'm done like i'm ready for bed at 8 15. i i was never ready for bed at 8 15 even when my mom used to make me go to bed at 8 15. <laughs> that was like my bedtime 8 15. Yeah. i'd watch evening magazine on cbs at uh -huh. 7 30 7 30 to 8. and then at eight o'clock i had to get ready for bed because i needed to be in bed at 8 15. and that's how it was until i don't know fourth or fifth grade you know what it's your mom's fault. You're getting tired at 8.15. She has conditioned you. True. For years <laughs> to go to bed at 8.15. No wonder. You're just reverting back to the, 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 the time you were conditioned to go to bed. I know. I, I broke free of that at a younger yeah. age. Addiction or that dependency. Eventually, yeah. I was allowed to watch Who's the Boss. I think that started at <laughs> 8. So I could watch 8 to 8.30, Who's the Boss once a Not week. Not anymore. And then I could go to bed at 8.45. Uh-uh. Yeah, not anymore. Nope. Now you couldn't do it. No, you couldn't do it. too tired. Do you just go to bed early or you just sit there being miserable? I, no, I sat there being miserable. It. I remember I had some yeah. tasks. I think I had to take out the garbage before the garbage pickup or whatever. And uh -huh. I ended up just sitting there doing nothing for like two and a half hours. Oh, yeah. But I mean, I'm not paying attention to anything. I, I'm literally no. just, I'm in and out of consciousness. The TV's on but I'm yeah. not doing anything. Yesterday, I needed to go buy groceries. I was my, had an empty fridge, everything's gone. I was like, okay, it's time to get groceries. So I'm pretty sure I laid around for an hour and a half trying to like powwow myself. And then at that point I was like, oh my God, I better go while they're still open and you know, in time to get home and go to bed and stuff. But yeah, the amount of time it takes me, it takes me longer to, get myself to do the task yes. than it is to do the task yeah like i did not grocery shop for an hour and a half but it took me an hour and a half to just be like you have to go buy groceries we gotta do it you gotta do it go 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 it, and then it was like hey. it took me two days to transfer the dirty dishes from the sink to the dishwasher two days mm -mm. I, it wasn't it's even a bad. large, it wasn't one of those loads that was big. You know, you know, those, yeah. you're leaving things out to soak them or whatever you're doing. No, no, no. This was just a, a small, media, medium sized load. Couldn't handle it. Took me two days. Anyway. I also heard that you don't even really need to soak most things. You can just wash them. And that's just, oh, yeah. So the soaking is just you lying to yourself that this oh, is, this is oh, a Oh, I know that one. That, this, and I'm like, yeah. That this household, that's the joke is, Oh, you need yeah, to go do so that. Great. And then I, and then I'll say, or my wife will say, Oh no, I'm soaking that. And that, therefore that ends the conversation <laughs> until the next day. So, ah, so I was soaking see, things for two days. Crazy. Normally I'd soak things for two days and I wouldn't feel bad. Yeah, Cause it, it makes it, it so not... much easier to wash when it just sits yeah. there for two days. No. It makes it great. It's super easy. You don't have to re-soak it again with hot water and, <laughs> and get it going. Oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, that's the garage. That's all I got. Yeah. So thank you. I guess that's about it. This episode. Yep. Next episode will be the last one of the year. I imagine we'll do like a year end wrap up and yeah, whatever. Email us at almost punk pod at Gmail. Tell us what your favorite songs or albums were this year and follow us on Instagram at almost punk. Over and out. Over and out.